I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will discuss maximum rectangle area inscribed in a triangle. The objective of this video is actually to introduce you to optimization questions where we are going to have one shape inscribed in another shape and this simple example will actually uh, tell you how to solve such questions, what steps to follow to solve such questions. So we are starting with a very very simple example. The question here is find the dimensions of the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in the right triangle with legs of length 8 centimeters and 10 centimeters if two sides of the rectangle lie along the legs. So that is the question given to you. So let me sketch the situation and then be much easier to solve this question. So what we will take is normally we'll take a kind of a coordinate plane to solve these questions. So let us say that the two sides are along x and y axis, right? So we have a triangle which is right triangle. So let me draw this triangle here. Let's say this is the triangle where the sides are 8 and 10 centimeters right so we'll say right triangle with legs of 8 and 10 centimeters let us say this is 8 for us and that is 10 for us so that is the triangle we have now we need to inscribe a rectangle with maximum area inside this particular right triangle right so that is right triangle and for convenience what we have done is we have drawn it along x and y axis correct it always helps because when you are working in a cartesian plane you can actually get the equation and then solve things better so the idea here is somehow relate the variables so we are saying that the two variables are x and y for our rectangle and where is the rectangle the rectangle is inside the triangle so let's make one so let's say this is the rectangle for us right now we don't know what the dimensions of this rectangle are to maximize its area but let us think about it in a general way so let's take this corner so these corners of the rectangle will actually be as shown right so always all the four should be on the sides of the triangle so that it can be inscribed inside it now let us consider a point on this hypotenuse of the a triangle so let us say in general this point is x y so any value of x y what does that mean it really means that length of this rectangle is x that is to say this distance from here to there is x and y is the height of this rectangle right so from here you can get one relation about area of the rectangle. So what is the area of the rectangle? We can write down area of rectangle is equal to x times y. Now the objective is to maximize this particular area. So whenever you have an equation you need to somehow relate the two variables which you have taken two or more in this case just two right. Now here you will see one way to relate them is similar triangles right so one way is to use similar triangles to relate them other ways uh, we will get to that also other ways to find the equation of a line which relates the two right so so we have two different approaches in such questions we could do similar triangles similar triangles means that you know this angle is equal to this angle and then we are working on 90 degrees right so the I mean we can take small triangle and the big triangle as such so let us consider the big triangle which is the triangle given to us whose sides are 8 and 10 and the small triangle which is this one for us now we'll do one method using similar triangles now in this case from similar triangles you can relate x and y we need to find what y is in terms of x so in a small triangle y over this side is how much since the total base is 8 that should be 
8 minus x, right? So we are talking about this side. So that side is 8 minus x. So we could write this as y over 8 minus x is equals to, for the big triangle, it is 10 over 8. 10 over 8, right? So that relates the two, right? So that is y equals to 10 over 8 times 8 minus x. So that is the relation you get from similar triangles, right? The other approach could have been to use equation of lines. So let me show you that also. If you have this equation, let's use equation of line. The y-intercept is 10 and the slope is minus 10 over 8, right? So we can write equation of line as y equals to what is the slope? You can go down 10 units and write 8. So it is minus 10 over 8 x and the y intercept is 10 plus 8 plus 10. So you could use equation of line also to get this relation. You get the idea, right? So it is exactly the same relation. So if you expand this, what do you get? You get 10 minus 10 over 8 x, right? I am purposely not simplifying this to show you some of the relations which we will develop as we saw. So these are two different ways of relating y with x. One we used similar triangles, okay? Very helpful, similar triangles. And the other equation of line. At times the equation of line can be given to you, right? Okay, so the idea is to relate the two variables which we have done. Now we can say area in terms of one variable x. So we are defining a function, area is function of x now, where x is along the base of this triangle, right? And we can write y as we defined here as minus 10 over 8x plus 10, right? So we get the area in terms of x, right? Now, to maximize this area, we need to find the critical points and also we can check what is the area at the extreme values of x. As you can see from here, x, this triangle could be a very wide triangle. For example, the x value, it could be kind of approaching like this big, right? So x could approach 8, do you see that? So that's the maximum value x could have. Or it could be a very thin but tall triangle like this, where x is approaching zero. You get the point? So what we can do here is we can say what are the boundary conditions for x? We say x could be greater than or equal to zero or could be less than or equals to eight. Now, as you can see in both these triangles, as x approaches the extreme value of zero or eight, its area becomes, area becomes zero, right? Because if x is approaching 0, 0 times anything will be 0. If x approaches 8, then y will be 0, right? So, so in both these cases, what you find here is that the area for the triangle for x value of 0 is 0 and for 8 is also 0. Now that gives you an idea that somewhere in between it is maximum. Do you see that? And as most of you must have guessed it, it is maximum when x is just half of it, right? Now that could be a question at times to show that for half of the width, it is maximum area, right? So there are different options. But anyway, you get an idea. But let's try to prove it or rather find it out. So we have from boundary condition a very clear value. That whatever critical point gives us, it is a maximum. So we know at critical point, we have a maximum. Is it okay? So at a critical number or point, we are looking for maximum area, correct? So that is all the thinking which you have to do while you solve. Okay, now let's continue with solution. So we'll find the derivative of this function with respect to x, right? So you could do one thing. When you are finding derivative, before even finding, let us expand this. It becomes simpler. So we'll expand it, right? So we'll get plus 10x, correct? Now we will find the derivative right? So the derivative for this is minus 2 times 10. So I'm writing, okay, 20 over 8 x and here we get plus 10, right? Now we need to equate this to 0 for our critical point, right? Or critical number, right? As you say, 
critical point will means that you have to find y also so we say number since we are only finding x value okay now this will be 0 that is to say that 20 over 8x equals to 10 and that gives you the value of x as 10 times 8 over 20 or it is equals to half of 8 do you see that whatever the base was half of that so that is the value of x for which we get a critical number and we know that will result into maximum area well you can find the dimensions if you substitute x as half of 8 in your equation you can find what y is right so for getting the dimensions let us find y value also so y should be equals to minus 10 over 8x which is half of 8 right so I'm writing 8 over 2 plus 10 and that is half of this so minus 5 plus 10 which is indeed 5 so as expected our dimensions are half of 8 which is 4 centimeter by half of 10 which is 5 centimeter for maximum area right of rectangle inscribed in this particular quadrant so at times I could ask this question like if there is a line in quadrant 1 then what is the area of maximum inscribed rectangle which it makes with one corner on the line and the sides along the x and y axis so these are different ways in which we can ask this question and as an exercise what you can do is you can generalize this question that is to say now you can take any value so if you take base with b and height as 10 right in that case if you replace these values with b and h if b is the base of the tri right triangle and h is the height of the right triangle in that case find the dimensions of largest rectangle so that question you can also solve with the same method and you expect the answer to be half of base and half of height so that gives you the answer for the given question right if you kind of generalize it you'll find that in any triangle it works right so that is kind of interesting and important to explore so I'd like you to explore all these combinations and then move on to similar questions thank you and all the best